Twisted Metal Black, one of the most enigmatic games I've ever played. A game for which symbolism and mystery are just as much part of the game as shooty action. The rabbit hole continually goes deeper and deeper the more I look into it. If you're just joining us, the story so far is thus. In the first video, we found out that based on hidden messages during Minion's loading screens, that this entire game is taking place within the head of Sweet Tooth, aka Needle's Kane. This is how his mind sees the world. And Minion, aka Marcus Kane, is the split personality of Needles, desperately trying to remain undetected lest Needles snuff him out and destroy the last vestiges of sanity within his mind. I later concluded that within the larger psyche of Sweet Tooth's mind, Needles Kane is the id, aka the primal part of the mind, Marcus Kane is the superego, aka the conscience, and Calypso is the ego, the mediator between the two. But I had an errant thought that if Needles, Marcus, and Calypso represent the three different aspects of the psyche in this made-up world, could there also be a hidden meaning behind each and every one of the other drivers in Twisted Metal Black? Could each of them represent an aspect of Sweet Tooth's mind? I put some thought into this, and while there's no definitive answer, I thought it would be interesting to run with this and go through each and every one of these characters to speculate on the greater meaning of their characters. I should also mention, the Twisted Metal Wiki has already done some of the work for me, in that the trivia section for some of these characters discuss the meaning behind the character, as if they represent certain aspects of Sweet Tooth's mind. So I'm apparently not the first person to think of this. With that said though, everything I'm about to hypothesize is fully my own interpretation, unless stated otherwise, though I'll probably need some help with some of these. Also, I probably won't be taking Twisted Metal Lost into account very much, because that's dubiously canon for a game that's already dubiously canon. I may be right, I may be wrong, I may be completely on the other side of the world. So I encourage you to give your takes on these characters as well in the comment section below. So, without further ado, let's start the mental gymnastics. Now, first off, we have the driver of Outlaw, Agent Stone. Although this Agent Stone isn't the Mr. Smithers to Dr. Eggman's Mr. Burns, I know I've already made that joke before, but it bears repeating, this guy is a former SWAT team member who was traumatized because while he was dealing with a group of terrorists, an innocent family got killed in the crossfire. If I had to guess, I think Agent Stone partially represents Needle's absolute contempt for law enforcement. The reason I say that is because of not only Outlaw, but another character later on. You see, there are two separate law enforcement officials in this game, and they both meet incredibly unhappy endings. In this case, he wishes to go back in time and be able to save the aforementioned family, and he succeeds, but in the process gets himself killed. So in this case, Outlaw, or Agent Stone, might also represent law enforcement's tendency to get in the way of the perfect kill, and this whole scenario is just kind of a wish-fulfillment thing for Needles. Or maybe not even their tendency to get in the way of the perfect kill specifically, but law enforcement's tendency just to get in the way generally. But either way, it definitely feels like this is some sort of wish-fulfillment thing against the concept of law and order. Now, Raven is an interesting case, as she is probably the most sane out of anybody in the game, and as such, her quest for revenge rings the most righteous, because there's very little clouding her judgment. But righteous really is the key word here. I think it's no coincidence that Raven is driving the car Shadow, which is the same car that Mortimer drove in Twisted Metal 2. Mortimer, of course, being the character who sent the souls of all those who died during the Twisted Metal tournaments after Calypso. Mortimer can be seen as somebody whose actions were just, so I believe that Raven is the personification of that concept. The concept of righteousness, even while doing horrible things. The justifiable side of breaking the law. Which is kind of messed up when you think about it, but considering that this is all taking place within the head of Sweet Tooth, allegedly, the idea of righteousness and justifiable homicide might be a bit skewed. So Billy Ray, and I swear to god I keep almost accidentally saying Bully Ray, is a character who doesn't have an easy interpretation to make. And the wiki offers no help in this regard, so what are the key story beats surrounding Billy Ray? Well, he's a normal man working an honest job until he's nearly killed by a pilot who's also having an affair with Billy's wife. He brutally murders his wife and later brutally murders the pilot. Billy makes it a point to mention that his wife is the first person he murdered, and the pilot will be the second. It may have been only the second time I killed someone, but it felt so damn good. 
I think I'm onto something with this, actually. I think that Billy Ray represents Sweet Tooth's first kill and the way it changed him. This could very well be a memory of Sweet Tooth's skewed by his mind and shrouded in metaphor. You know what I mean? Perhaps Sweet Tooth had a wife. She cheated on him, and that was what sent him over the edge. The physical deformation that Billy Ray went through could be a mental interpretation of how Sweet Tooth's mind twisted when he found out. I once made a joke about this ending possibly being one of the devs trying to work something out of their systems, but perhaps it goes further than that. Perhaps it's Sweet Tooth himself trying to work things out. No Face is another character that doesn't quite have an obvious interpretation for me. Obviously, No Face is a bald guy with a messed up face, which is also true for Needles himself as well as Calypso. So I think it's entirely possible that No Face could represent scars, both physical and mental, and the horrors one goes through in their lives to acquire said scars. As a matter of fact, the physical scars that No Face has could very well represent the mental scars that Sweet Tooth has accumulated through his life. However, the fact that No Face has no eyes could also represent the distorted view in which Sweet Tooth sees the world through. What with the game allegedly taking place in his mind. I think there's a lot of possibilities with this character, but in my own interpretation, I'm going with Scars, although it could mean multiple things. You know, good symbolism is open to multiple interpretations. So John Doe is the second character who's part of law enforcement and meets an unhappy ending. In this case, he's an FBI agent who infiltrated a doomsday cult, but got himself amnesia-fied in the process. Eventually, he's able to find out who he was, but is killed shortly after. So what could John Doe represent? That's a good-ass question. Because there's no easy answer in this case. No easy symbolism to attribute to the personality or desires of Sweet Tooth. So what are the key themes that John Doe works with? Well, a man who's simultaneously a cop and a criminal, amnesia, terrorism... You know what? If both the members of law enforcement in Twisted Metal Black represent different angles of Sweet Tooth's contempt for law enforcement, and we take into account that John Doe was technically acting as a criminal, I wonder if John Doe represents what Sweet Tooth sees as the inherent hypocrisy of law enforcement. The idea that they can get away with doing crimes and killing, and the only thing that makes them justified is the job they work. When in actuality, what's the difference when Sweet Tooth does a horrible thing and when a cop does a horrible thing? Is the line between lawful and criminal really a line, or is it various shades of grey? John Doe was a cop, and all it took for him to start killing indiscriminately was him to lose his memory and to want it back. So it shows there really isn't much separation between a psychotic killer and a law-abiding person. But despite that line being blurred, we're willing to give all this power and free passes to people who are only a few small steps from being just as crazy as Needles. Yet Sweet Tooth is the one that's vilified. And I think Sweet Tooth sees an inherent hypocrisy in that. I'm not speaking in any way under my own opinion here, I'm just interpreting what I feel Sweet Tooth's interpretation of John Doe is. Obviously, we need law and order, but Sweet Tooth is a psychotic killer, so he views cops as only a few short steps away from him. So this one's a bit tough because, as we know, Bloody Mary is quite a different beast to Sweet Tooth in pretty much every possible way. I don't think Sweet Tooth is too hung up on whether or not people love him. Essentially, Bloody Mary is a woman who went nuts trying to wait for the man of her dreams, but he never came, and she got murderously jealous of all her friends finding love while she couldn't. I have no idea how that relates to Sweet Tooth, so I'm gonna consult the wiki and see what they think. Huh. Okay, I'm starting to see something here. I was onto something with the idea that Needles doesn't care about whether or not people love him, because that in itself could be what Bloody Mary represents. His contemptuous attitude for the concept of love and affection. Because almost universally with Sweet Tooth, love is not something he considers while he rampages around. Even in something like Twisted Metal 2012, we see his descent. He has a loving family, but as soon as he gives in to the evil within himself, his family are just targets for his rampage. Yeah, that's something I can get behind with Bloody Mary. Whoops, I said it three times. For Dollface, it's all about the mask. The arc of Dollface is all about wanting to remove the mask, but then eventually deciding that she's better off with the mask. 
even though she already got the key to the mask, which required her to kill her old boss, Mr. Creel, who was the one who put the mask on her in the first place, for making a small mistake. I believe that this is a more metaphorical version of Sweet Tooth's ending, because when you think about it, it kind of has the same idea and the same outcome. Dollface wants to end her curse by removing the mask, and she chooses not to go through with the solution to her curse because she prefers the person she is now. The connection is furthered when we see Mr. Creel fiddling with what is undeniably Sweet Tooth's mask. I think Dollface could represent Sweet Tooth's absolute disdain for who he was before he put on the mask, so to speak. He sees the person he used to be as weak, so by taking off the mask, he would be going back to being weak, so he refuses to do so even if the chance is staring him in the face. There's a phrase that's used in Mr. Grimm's story campaign, which is pretty well a tagline for the entirety of Twisted Metal Black. They say the mind bends and twists in order to deal with the horrors of life. I think my mind bent so much it snapped in two. I think Mr. Grimm is simply the personification of drifting into insanity and how Sweet Tooth views the process. Mr. Grimm is a Vietnam veteran who was forced to eat his own dying colleague in order to survive. It's made pretty clear by the end that Mr. Grimm was knee-deep in insanity, so I believe just based off that intro line and the subject matter at hand, Mr. Grimm represents the process by which someone descends into madness. But by the end of it, he realizes that he's growing a taste for human flesh, so not only does he represent descending into madness, he represents descending into madness and enjoying it. Which is probably very much in line with what Sweet Tooth probably felt as he transitioned from Marcus Kane to Needles. He certainly enjoys being insane if his ending is anything to go off of. But yeah, I'm not sure if Mr. Grimm represents a descent into insanity, or if he represents how Needles views insanity, but I think either way it works. So Preacher is a bit of an interesting one, because it's established in the cutscenes during Sweet Tooth's campaign that Preacher was the one who cursed Sweet Tooth with the flaming head thing. So he has a lot more significance to the story of Needle's Cane. So what is Preacher's story about? Well, it has to do with religion, hallucination, insanity, an alleged cursed child, and eventual suicide. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's take broad strokes into account here. Preacher is all about religion, and he holds power over needles, if the whole flaming head thing is to be, you know, taken into account. So I believe that Preacher is the embodiment of religious trauma, and the absolute contempt that Needles has for organized religion as a result. Perhaps, Needles was traumatized by a priest in his youth. Preacher with the curse has a lot of power over Needles, and as we know, trauma is a very powerful thing that you can't escape from. And all the other aspects of Preacher's story campaign have to do with the various ways our minds work in order to cope with trauma. It's kind of messed up, but this game is anything if not messed up. So, if you don't remember, the original driver of Yellow Jacket is actually the father of Sweet Tooth, Charlie Kane. So in this game, Charlie Kane is dead, and his unnamed son, Needles' little brother, is controlling him. I'm going to hazard to guess that this little brother doesn't actually exist. I think the unnamed brother represents Needles' inner child. A piece of him that's so far removed from his current existence that Needles can't even give a name to his inner child. That's how insignificant he is. As for Charlie Kane being dead, I'd imagine that represents his complicated family relationship. His father is metaphorically dead to him, and therefore, in his own mind, his dad is actually dead. I'd say that's a pretty easy metaphorical thing to derive from this twosome. It's all about family and the troubles they're in. I'd imagine Charlie Kane wasn't too pleased to find out his son became a serial killer, but what do I know? Cage is probably the easiest one out of the lot to decipher the meaning behind. His entire character is about wanting to remove the part of his brain that makes him feel compassion for human life because he wants to become the greatest serial killer of all time. And he doesn't want pesky feelings to get in the way. So obviously he represents that exact thing in Needles. His bloodlust, his craving to take human life, and the desire to rid the parts of his mind that try and hold him back from freely killing without consequences. 
This right here is Needles Kane's greatest desire personified, a being of pure and absolute distilled murderous mirth, without any of the physical or psychological factors to hold him back. Cage is essentially the power fantasy of Needles Kane, the person that Sweet Tooth sees as the ideal person for him to strive to be, and the steps he needs to take to get there. The wiki hypothesizes that Cage represents people who try and compete with Needles, but I don't think that really fits because that has a negative connotation to it, and there's nothing negative about the way this ending is portrayed. This has more power fantasy vibes than anything cautionary, but then again, he does mention his desire to be better than that clown. The town was scared of that clown freak. <laughs> I'll show them something they'll never forget. And he does show up in Twisted Metal Lost, where after an encounter with Sweet Tooth, he's just a head attached to a torso, because Sweet Tooth apparently took mercy on Cage and left him alive as a warning to anyone who tries to challenge Sweet Tooth. But still, I prefer to think that Cage is a power fantasy than something to be viewed negatively. On one hand, because Twisted Metal Lost was obviously not being taken into account while Black was being made, so I'm not sure if I should count it towards any sort of interpretation of Twisted Metal Black, but also mostly because of his connection to the following. So this one's fun. Axel is looking for the guy who killed his wife, and it turns out to be Needles himself. Then he shoots Needles a few times and goes on his way. I've gone on record in the past as saying that I think this ending represents sort of a level of internalized guilt. Either it's a cumulatory thing, or Sweet Tooth has a level of guilt over one specific thing he's done, of which we're not privy. Perhaps it's the wife thing that I mentioned in Billy Ray's ending. You know, seeing as Axel's wife was killed and Billy Ray killed his wife. Two sides of the same coin. Either way, to me, Axel is the representation of that guilt. An internalized guilt that in this case ends up becoming crushing guilt as represented by Axel. It's worth noting that Axel's patient profile says he suffers from severe depression, which is also in line with how Cage says he feels when he kills. Which tells me that they kind of represent two halves of the same coin. Cage representing Sweet Tooth's desire to live guilt-free, and Axel representing said guilt. Which one wins determines the direction that Needles' mind will take. That said, I also saw someone hypothesize that Axel could represent the ideal death, the way that Needles wants to go out. No ceremony, no process, nothing philosophical, just chained up and shot to death. I think both are equally valid, but personally, I prefer the former theory. But I could see the latter being true as well, it's really just down to personal perception. And now we've saved the best for last in my opinion, the most intriguing character outside of the main three in Twisted Metal Black, the eponymous man of the game's namesake, Black. Could somebody tell me if that sentence made any sense? Because I don't know. Black is obviously named after the subtitle of the game, so he has to have some level of importance. It's also worth noting that he's one of only three characters that aren't actually part of Blackwell Asylum, the others being Warthog, aka Cage, and Minion, aka Marcus Kane. So it leads me to believe that he's not a conscious part of Sweet Tooth's mind. Then you have to take into consideration the fact that he was bred to kill Calypso. That's his entire goal in the game. It's not like Marcus Kane, who's the sane half of Sweet Tooth's personality that's fighting against Needles Kane. Black is simply a force of nature with a goal and won't let anything stand in its way. To me, that comes across as one of two possible things. Either it's a physical manifestation of a lobotomy, seeing as it's attempting to destroy aspects of the personality, or it's the physical manifestation of brain cancer. Because he's a being of very little consciousness, he doesn't say much of anything. He's almost solely a being of intent, and that's a good description of cancer itself. It's indiscriminate, it doesn't have any rhyme or reason, it just exists to kill you. Then you have the fact that he's not a patient at Blackwell Asylum, which means he's not an intended part of the diegetic elements of the game. And that also ties into the concept of cancer. It's not biologically intended for us to have cancer, it just happens. Then there's also the ending, because even after the bomb goes off, Black is still alive, and that also ties into this, because sometimes even if you get properly treated, the cancer might just come right back as if nothing happened. But I don't know, despite that being my interpretation, I feel like the rabbit hole might go even deeper with Black. I can't tell you why, I guess the fact that his name shares the subtitle with the game itself makes me believe that there's a deeper meaning behind his character. So that was the cast of Twisted Metal Black interpreted. Interpretation is fun, and I enjoy reading between the lines.
I'll say once again that this is all my interpretation, and if you have a different interpretation, let me hear it. I'm left wondering how much of this was developer intent, and how much of this is down to the players reading into what they see. I think that's a universal thing with Twisted Metal Black. It's a game that's shrouded in so much mystery that it's impossible to tell what's deliberate and what's me reading into things. But nobody can or will stop me from reading into the mysteries and symbolism of this game, and I will do it until the moon turns blue. If you enjoy what I do here, consider pledging to my Patreon, like these fine people here. And a special thank you to user Inutsu for going above and beyond. And if you want to support me in a free way, you can like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're always up to date on my latest endeavors. Otherwise, I've been the King of Snark Style right here on Tactical Bacon Productions, and I will see you next time. Peace!